remember the last time they fell down in the playground oh man okay yes 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 we remember we remember yes. lots of people say i do yes me oh last week oh i'm so sorry <laughs> i hope yes. you are okay okay so now try to think of what happened did you get wounded uh, was there blood did it heal within a few days uh, or did you have to go to the doctor maybe uh, did you have to take any medicines okay so people say not severe that's good okay but all of us have had this experience where we've fallen down we've hurt ourselves we've got wounded um and hopefully for everybody it's healed pretty quickly and you're all fine some of you have had to have stitches which means it was much more serious right okay some people say it took two weeks few months right okay so you can see there are different kinds of wounds some of them heal quickly some of them take a little bit of time yes typically 4 weeks is a is the right time yes yes okay yes. so usually when we think of a wound it's any break in our skin right it's any break in our skin any break in our tissue that is below the skin so the skin is a very huge organ it covers our whole body and we look at that later but if you see a cross section of the skin under the microscope it has layers so can you look at this picture of the skin on the right and say what are the layers do you think that get damaged when you get a wound what are the layers yeah a brick it's like a cake yeah it's like a very nicely set up cake true yeah so yeah the top layers so that's called the dermis and the epidermis epidermis is epi on top of the dermis so yes it's exactly these two layers that get damaged dermis and epidermis and so wounds can be superficial or deep superficial are the only the upper layers and deep you know go deeper into the dermis so which are the ones do you think will be more difficult to heal superficial or deep wounds which which wounds do you think will take longer to heal yeah typically the deeper wounds because there's more tissue loss sometimes it even damages the blood vessels so this is how the skin is structured and most of us will have have had some kind of superficial wound for sure okay definitely yes so we all obviously see our skin every day hopefully all of you know that it is the largest organ in our body it does so much it protects us from everything that's outside our body it keeps everything inside safe uh, but it does so much more than that as well right it regulates our temperature it helps us maintain a barrier against harmful uh, bacteria and microorganisms that we're going to talk about soon okay and it's a huge organ right it covers absolutely everything from your head to the end of your fingers to your toes so so much surface area which means so much surface area where you can also get wounded right and that yeah. is definitely something that i think all of you notice you've had wounds at different places you don't always get hurt at the same place so your skin structure can get damaged at different locations on your body but most of the time it does heal quickly right as planned right so typically you fall in the playground the younger kids younger young younger young minds i don't know what classification i'm making within young minds also now but they would say that what do you do usually we are shocked most of them it's the ego that is bruised when you fall in down like is like ha oh, how did i fall down how did the universe do this to me and after you've recovered from that you wash it clean it try and remove any soil mud sometimes you put some antibiotic cream right like sofromycin or something that will be there at home put some cotton put some gauze and get some tender loving care and then you start hoping and it it starts to heal right no sooner that's happened it starts to heal um so what a uh, let, let, so once that is done we 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 anticipate that it's going to heal but what can happen yes during this time so normally in the healing we go through four stages of healing okay so the first is you know if you noticed that there's blood that's coming out of your wound uh within some time it generally does stop right you try to apply a bit of pressure on it um but eventually it does stop and the reason the first reason it stops is because a clot is formed right you see blood clots form and that's something all of you learn about in school or will learn about in school soon hopefully 
but there is so much going on underneath the clot underneath the surface that you see right because your cells in the skin in all of these different layers are signaling to your immune system telling the, the immune system that listen there's a wound we've been hurt there is a break in the skin and we need to find a way to repair it and the first thing it does is there are tons of immune cells that come to this site where you've been hurt right because they their main role is to help you get better and they do this by many things and one of the things is by seeing if there are any unwanted bacteria unwanted infecting agents in your wound okay and they want to try and remove them then they want to tell your skin your healthy skin that listen there's a break here and we need some help so your skin starts replicating it starts making more of skin cells and then these move into this site to try and repair the layers that have been damaged right if there has been a damage to your blood uh, veins below um, your arteries below then those get fixed as well so in these different stages your wounds typically heal and any kind of wound goes through these four stages of healing within of around 4 weeks of time which is what all of you noticed right absolutely so this is what normally should happen so if you think about it guys it's an orchestra of cells and metabolites and factors right so what those little fish are those are the skin cells that are going to start growing to fix that gap in your skin you have to imagine it as a gap right now you have to fix this somehow so this is what normally happens right but sometimes so the wounds don't heal in this process and then they what is an acute means something that is recent so an acute wound which typically progresses through these stages and heals doesn't heal and becomes a chronic wound so what does the word chronic mean to you when you say are wo aadmi to matlab he's a chronic guy yaar like what are you referring to when you say that like what does chronic mean over a long period of time right long time so these wounds don't heal but they remain wounds over a long period of time and that's a problem because you certainly don't want your body to constantly be trying to heal it it's painful it causes swelling it may bleed it may get infected so a chronic wound is not a good situation at all right would you agree yes it's serious it's continuous it constantly needs dressings and care so snail once we know that things are chronic what is the major reason these wounds turn chronic can we think about that so one of the major reasons that wounds get chronic heal is actually an infection okay so you have a wound that's a break in your skin that means the layers of your skin are exposed um and this exposed skin provides amazing nutrition to lots of bacteria lots of microorganisms okay and they all find a way to enter your wound and they come from lots of places it can be something that touch the wound it can just be microbes that are lying on your skin so we always have microbes on our skin we have microbes on our skin right now as well right yes. they're not causing an infection because they're part of our healthy micro micro flora or microbiome but when there are infecting agents they are pathogens they are harmful bacteria that are usually not supposed to be there um and then they make a home for themselves in your, in your wound uh, they replicate there are more and more of them they build these protective houses called biofilms oh wow and because of this uh, great i'm so happy you remember that abhishek yes <laughs> so we build these houses and that makes it more and more difficult for us to treat them and for your immune system to fight back right because if the bacteria are covered in this protective layer within the biofilm it's very difficult for your immune cells to try and fight them and try and remove them from the wound so then we just have a infection that's constantly staying in your wound and making it worse that's a problem because again the bacteria will cause pain swelling redness discomfort so ala had a nice question what is the difference between chronic wound and hemophilia so wound is a wound that doesn't heal hemophilia is a genetic defect of a lack of a clotting factor which is why when you get injured you bleed it's not a chronic wound but a wound that refuses to stop bleeding or you don't even sometimes have to be wounded people can bleed into just bruises or into body, body sites so hemophilia wound is acquired in life uh, hemophilia is a genetic defect of a clotting lack of a clotting factor right but yes it has something to do with wounds in the sense the wound keeps bleeding and that first stage where the clot should form doesn't happen 
okay yes kavish says vitamin k that's also needed to stop uh, stop bleeding very important so what really happens is the wounds get infected with uh, uh, bacteria these are this this is known as wound infection and they become chronic wounds there are a few very common bacteria that you find in wounds and their names are beautiful staphylococcus streptococcus and pseudomonas these are the three very common bacteria and the reason we are talking about this is because we study these bacteria in the lab and so we are building a nice story for you so wounds can become chronic because they get infected this is called a wound infection and these are the three staphylococcus streptococcus and pseudomonas that are the common bacteria that cause these infections okay why pseudo yeah i don't know what pseudo about it like it's very real it's not pseudo <laughs> it's not pseudo at all <laughs> yes it's a very real infection okay all right okay so now we've talked about all of these bacteria we showed you such pretty images and diagrams but what do they, what do they actually look like in a wound so these are some images that show you that okay so what can you notice so the all the blue that you see is all human cells okay so that's a way that in the lab we can stain them we can give them a color okay so all the blue that you see is representative of all the human cells or your own skin cells but the red or the green that you see in the two images is what the bacteria is okay so can all of you describe what do they look like what does it look like these red and green spots you are seeing in these images <laughs> pasta okay avisha <laughs> okay you are changing our uh, our food preferences now <laughs> constellation okay biofilms yes they Basically. are biofilms yes they are biofilms right so they are actually clusters of bacteria so the red you see is not one bacteria it's an entire cluster of bacteria right because bacteria are very very tiny um so that whole red spot you see has tons of bacteria in it which means that even in wounds or when bacteria are present with human cells they are present as these clusters they are present as these biofilms okay so in infections bacteria are not just one single bacteria present they are usually present in groups and they are in clusters uh and this is beneficial to them because they work with each other to become more resistant to all the mechanisms that, by which our body is trying to get rid of them so this is an actual pathology image uh made in these authors so when people study them they publish in original scientific literature and this is how bacteria look in wounds right uh clumpy sticking to each other yeah all those descriptions okay so how do we study them so we said one way of studying them is like pathologists study them on humans directly so they collect biopsies from the wounds when you go for treatment okay it has challenges we'll see another way is to wound an animal and study and we talked about the challenges with using animals in research right so maybe some of you can just mention what are the challenges with using animals in research maybe we can type in the chat window so definitely uh, humans and animals get wounds but studying them has challenges yes someone has a costly unruly cruel ethical those words we used right ethical ethically challenging so one way we study single cells but what do you think the issue with taking of single cell is why can't us why can't we look at a single skin cell and say we are studying a wound what do you think the challenging challenge is that with that is why can't a single cell, skin cell be a wound it's, it's not accurate. very very good i mean it they are different exactly a cell is not a wound a wound is a collection of cells that has got broken so very good excellent we take out wounds from humans study wounds in humans these are all possibilities but they are difficult you need approvals you can't just go randomly collect samples from any human or any animal that's unethical it takes time it takes money and it may not be very scientifically accurate so we have to think of ways to study wounds in research labs where we don't rely on humans and animals and what are some of those ways that those are some of the ways that we work on right so we are trying to answer the question can we build something similar to a wound in a lab how does that question sound to you guys very very ambitious so can we build something like a wound in a lab it sounds amazing let's see i hope you continue to think our work is amazing okay okay so this is exactly what we are trying to do okay we are trying to build a skin wound infection like system um in the lab 
but obviously not on humans not on an animal but on a chip okay and this is not the chips that we eat uh, but just a tiny tiny chip uh, that is made of different kinds of materials that we'll come to in a while okay but it's very small it's the size of your palm okay um and yeah. we want to try and replicate all these different layers that we saw in our skin which may get damaged if there's a wound we want to try and replicate that in this chip that we are building in the lab okay so we saw there are many layers in our skin there are each layer has different types of cells so some of the things that we are trying to build are two is using two major skin cell types so one are fibroblasts and one are keratinocytes okay so in our skin the way they are layered there are fibroblasts at the bottom and then keratinocytes at the top okay and that's exactly what we are trying to build uh, in the lab exciting right so so this is what it looks like <laughs> this is what it looks like yes thank you sneha because i just went like and i didn't have any words <laughs> in my mouth after that so thank you for filling in for me <laughs> uh, i think in the future i should plan my words before i just go <laughs> okay so this is what it looks like we all know the size of our palms this is the size okay so this is a researcher this is actually sneha's hand holding the chip in the lab and so it's a plastic it's made of some special plastic it's made by a process called 3d printing so we've designed it using a software and then we give this information to a 3d printer and it prints so any idea how 3d printing works anyone can briefly tell us how is it different from your printer printing paper printing so it is how is it different layer by layer brilliant it uses lasers layer by layer it is 3d what you print on a paper is two dimensions right but what you print is 3d you can actually hold it it's it's something you can hold and it prints layer by layer and there is this central gap if you notice there is a chamber in the middle do you see that empty place that is where the wound will will be made so the top and bottom are covered with glass just to enclose it so we can grow the cells in it and that little area in the middle of the chip is our wound you also see it has connections on both sides and we'll see what they are for so what do we use to build this wound we use two types of skin cells fibroblasts and keratinocytes but we said a wound infection has to have bacteria and so we use fluorescent bacteria which are pseudomonas and staphylococcus so everyone getting it so far you're getting the components of the wound infection on a chip okay so we have quite a few questions in the chat window so maybe let's take some questions okay uh the first question i think i saw was how do you get these materials or how do you get these cells which is a very good question so a lot of research labs around the world use such cell lines they are called cell lines um you can get them from different places uh they are sometimes donated by somebody uh in a clinical setting and then there are companies that actually make an entire cell line out of them so you can buy them from companies okay that's where we got them from uh they come in a liquid form it's not they're individual cells it's not a tissue so it doesn't look or feel like your skin you can't even see these cells without the microscope okay so all these images that you're seeing on on this slide they were taken under a microscope that's the only reason you can see the cells right which is also true of your own skin so if you look at your own skin right now you can't see individual cells you can just see your skin because there are so many cells all of them joined together as this tissue right as your entire skin layer okay the bacteria also you can actually buy from different repositories there are standard repositories so they make sure that they have the right bacteria with the right name they tell you what color it's going to be where did they get it from all of this information very nice so bacteria are artificially colored guys they are no color yes. you give the add some fluorescent molecule so that they appear color right you're getting that right so when you see scientists write grants you heard that we want grants all the time it's to be able to buy all these things we buy from companies these cells we buy the bacteria we buy the microscope okay all of that or okay. right okay another really great question is why are the images for the skin cells black and white because that's not what our skin looks like but that's because that's how your individual skin cells actually look okay the colors we have the diversity we see in colors of skin is because of a color pigment right that's does anybody know what that pigment is 
several will know i'm sure so keratin is a protein melanin, melanin is the pigment very good very good okay. very good so that's present in a completely different cell that's not present in fibroblasts or keratinocytes so those cells are colorless and actually the bacteria are also colorless but we fluorescently color them okay it's an artificial color we give them so when we started our lab we managed to get all of this we designed this we had an engineer working with us who apparently is j who not apparently i don't know what i'm talking <laughs> today but the engineer is j do you remember the bread entrepreneur yes so he was then working yes kavish has double thumbs up he was working as a biomedical engineer with us when we started out so he designed this chip he and snehal got a got it into process to 3d print it we had started making the cells in the lab we started standardizing the bacteria in the lab so we had all of this ready now like we had all these parts ready to build the whole device okay yes okay so this is what the device looks like as you can see it's palm sized um and it has a gap in the middle so that gap in the middle is where the wound will be um it has an inlet and outlet and we'll discuss what these inlet and outlet connect to in some time uh, but the device is made from very special material that we use for 3d printing okay and the size and all of the dimensions of each part have been very carefully designed by jay uh, and we've tried to figure out all of these sizes based on the average size of wounds that we know okay so it's not just a random size we pick we actually had to look at lots of research papers we had to go through information available to find out what would be an accurate size to try and replicate a wound area okay then now that we know that the wound has skin cells we had to start building ways to grow these skin cells in the lab all right so we took the fibroblasts and keratinocytes that we brought with that we had purchased we had given money purchased and we found a way to grow them in that little central chamber so we could now grow them together so it was like mimicking a real wound and then to actually mimic the injury of the wound we made a scratch in those cells and as you can see over 0 hours 4 hours 24 and 48 hours the scratch started to close so what do you think we are trying to mimic here when we make a scratch in the skin cells and over time they are closing what are we trying to mimic when we do this we are trying to mimic a wound cell growth very good a wound the depth of the wound okay we are trying to mimic a wound closing like a wound healing exactly we are trying to mimic a wound healing so we have found a way to do this now the device can grow these cells together all right this took a lot of work we published it also whatever we uh, did to to being able to build uh, grow these cells together we published it also so we made one step further now okay we bought we managed to get all the components now we've grown the skin cells in the device yes so remember we talked about those inlet and outlets that were in the device um so what what do they do what they do is they connect to something called a pump okay and this is the design of the pump it has a motor uh, which helps pump things okay but why do we want to pump things can anybody think of the wound remember try and remember the wound images that we looked at in the start all those beautiful drawings why do we need a pump what is something that flows in the wound can anybody think of something that flows in your wound your blood absolutely right because you have all of your blood veins arteries running in your skin and when you do get a wound there is bleeding there is flow right that happens your immune cells are flowing into the site of the wound so there is lots of movement your wound even though it's staying in one place even though you can't see it that doesn't mean it's static it's moving it's very dynamic so we wanted to have a pump so that we could try and mimic all of this we can try and replicate all of this in our device in the lab the pump does not contain blood we will come to what the pump is going to pump through okay so this also if you remember snehal we built it from scratch the pump yes. we got some uh, students from our department and said hey this is a project for you build a pump <laughs> they were like okay so they started sourcing all the raw material what do you think you need to build a pump can you think what are the parts of a pump what are you going to need to build a pump to pump anything 
what are you going to need tubing great idea they got the first thing right tubing you need a motor wire, wire. somewhere to create a vacuum spring you need some electronics to be able to punch in what flow what rate I turn think. it on turn it off battery very good so let's share a secret with you the pump was built using a specific type of battery so if you had to purchase a battery and i said make it really inexpensive where would you go where would you go to buy a battery what kind of battery could you think of that you'd buy that is uh no lithium to no something even simpler not triple a or double a but something larger than that what, what kind of shop will have some battery that you will need uh a car battery excellent yes so we run the pump on a car battery quite literally an excite car battery runs the pump and the engine, the uh, students who were working with us also made a uh, kind of attached software on the computer they could control putting the pump on and off how much fluid to flow etc so this was a project in itself now so you, as you can see when you do science there are projects within projects within projects right so that's how a, a big picture gets built so this is they made it right they've done this the next step where a student in our lab came nizam he found a way to connect the pump to the device and yes now i'll go ahead yeah so now the way we want to use this whole device is you connect all of the tubings that you talked about to this motor to this battery um that is in our pump and we put ourselves into the small space in the center which is going to replicate the wound um it is like we said on both sides it's covered by glass which means it's very easy for light to penetrate through this right um and the reason we designed it like that is so that we can put this whole device under a microscope and we can actually observe what's happening inside this fake wound in the lab that we've created right correct correct imagine so now the device is there see how the device has cells the device is connected to a pump pump can flow something in we'll see what we need to flow and the whole thing can go under a microscope isn't that fascinating observe everything that's happening inside this fake wound yeah okay so now let's move on to uh how will you create a wound we want to know your ideas so we've grown the cells and we told you one way we could create a wound what are the other ways you can think of how will we create a wound in this device very good siddharth you make a scratch with a wire or a pipette tip the only thing it should be sterile so you don't destroy your cells okay anything sterile okay you can make a scratch uh, shivram says scrape it okay, okay very good make a hole poke with a needle China burn it very nice idea burn it beautiful beautiful ideas so so far we've only managed to do it with making a scratch we haven't yet optimized the burning and the poking and other things but these are all ways with acid says sahana so how are you thinking of these ideas how are these ideas coming to you what what information are you using to tell us how you'd make a wound not burning yourself burning the cells in the so yes exactly from ways humans get injured from ways humans get wounds with burns with acid with physical injury that means your scratch poke scrape all of that right so we are mimicking how humans get injured but in 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 our way of creating a wound okay yes wounds can happen in different ways okay so we figured that out how to create a wound but the next thing that sneal is going to talk to you about is we talked about flowing something in through that pump and someone said blood but not quite blood what would you think you should flow through that device you obviously have to flow something that's relevant to the wound so does juice count as relevant to the wound i would think not right i would think not okay let's see kavish says serum that's a um, good start kavish definitely serum is and nandini says that. fake blood that's also a very good start very good start right because again very good real blood you again has to you know where are you going to get it from you don't get real blood in the market somewhere just in a shop right <laughs> that would be a scary shop that would be a scary shop yes so there's <laughs> lots of ethical steps to go through so we wanted to think of what we could add that was not something that relied on humans directly 
um but something that we could make in the lab and something that was still relevant to humans right so what you ideally want is some liquid that is that mimics all the conditions in a wound so what are the conditions in a wound there is obviously some amount of serum because your blood has serum that's flowing in right but there are so many other components there's collagen because your skin has collagen in it and when your skin is damaged there is uh, more collagen that's moving in there are beds of collagen that are being laid down to reform your skin there are other important proteins like fibrinogen fibronectin so all of these are proteins that help maintain the structure of your skin right and these are all damaged when you have a wound there are numerous things like lactic acid uh, and all the various components of serum itself so many different things that are present in serum that are all present in your wound as well right so we wanted a fluid that had all of these components and that's exactly what we built yeah exactly so we added different chemicals and proteins and we made a fake fake wound fluid like a mimic yeah. wound fluid so for this we looked at papers and found what is the actual composition of clinical wound fluid and we tried to mimic it so now does this seem relevant to put through the pump does it seem a little more relevant than blood and definitely more relevant than orange juice right so we are providing the relevant nutrients the relevant proteins the relevant chemicals okay we are figuring it out because it's expensive these chemicals again are bought from bigger labs that make them so we are figuring out how we can put that in through the pump but what is the one big component that we need to add to this wound device we have the cells we have the fluid we made the wound we can put it under a microscope but what big thing exactly big rather what big small thing do we need to add so we need to add bacteria right because the wound infection we said chronic wounds the major reason is presence of bacteria so can you think of what bacteria you would add now that we shared the names with you can you think of what bacteria you would add can anyone remember <laughs> pseudomonas okay that's pseudo thing okay pseudomonas okay yes and streptococcus very good and another one staphylococcus exactly pseudomonas streptococcus staphylococcus so again the bacteria are colored artificially such that they are given a green or red color only so that we can see them otherwise we can't see them right they are colorless and we've added them to the wound cells so what color are the wound cells here what color are the skin cells in this image what color are the skin cells very good blue so we've dyed them a color right we've dyed them a color and we added the bacteria and now what do you see the bacteria are clumping and they are forming biofilm how how do they appear and can you compare them to the picture of a clinical biofilm that we showed you in the beginning which is on the side here can you tell us your thoughts how these red green bacteria appear when compared to a clinical biofilm tell us what do you think do they look similar do they look different just describe them for us they they look similar so yeah maybe you say they are not so much in a cluster good point but you still see little clumps around the blue skin cells right right so this is how we are we, we can try and get them to be bigger clumps depending on the time we grow the bacteria and other things but this is how we are mimicking the wound infection state in the lab so are you seeing how we have built up to something that closely resembles that clinical picture and that clinical picture is actually very hard to get as we said you can't go around wounding people and collecting their skin cells right or even people are wounded they may not give you permission to to, to take their tissue so this is how we are trying to do it okay why clumsy and awful i don't know but clumpy clumpy sounds more like it okay, okay. all right so now we are building this platform that has flow that has skin cells that has bacteria that cause infections and you have given us so many different ideas by which you would make a fake wound in this device right so what would you do then with this device so we obviously we can take pretty pictures but how is this useful how is this useful to all of us how is this useful to science so can you tell us what you would do what would you do with this wound device
what would you do um yeah you can study okay you can very test good medicines very good yes different Absolutely. kinds of medicines yes that very and that's good. one of the most important things right the first so whenever a new medicine is introduced it's not immediately given to humans it needs to be tested on different platforms it's usually tested even in animals before it's given to humans because we don't know how humans will react so this platform which uses human cells which uses you know you're not harming any animals directly um you don't have to go through the ethical and costly processes of testing on animals and humans this device could be a way that you can test all of these new medicines that are coming up um and see if they have any effects on the infection if they have they are harming the human cells um and that's what we want right we want a medicine that removes the infection but does not harm us there's no point of an infection of a medicine if it can clear the infection but it's also harming our own cells because then right. our skin cells are still being harmed and the wound will never heal right so that's one way the other thing is that scientists can use this to study biofilm formation they can study different aspects of biofilm development and this is also really important to be able to even develop any medicines because you need to understand how the bacteria act in the wound you need to understand how they build these houses how they protect themselves to try and find a, me- a mechanism by which you can attack them right and because it's a platform that has bo- both human cells and bacteria you can also use it to see how bacteria and human cells interact do they latch on and you know attach to our human cells is that why we can't get rid of them or do they use some other mechanisms to secrete toxins and harm our cells so these are all the different things you can study and of course the most important thing you can study is wound healing does how do wounds heal uh, does it change when you change the type of bacteria does it change when you change the flow or what you are flowing through right so there are so many questions that this platform can try and help us answer help answer absolutely so uh, guys you now we use sopramycin okay for the wound but say somebody says oh i think this collection of uh, say some compound collection of silver is good for the wound what would you tell them i mean what would you want to do they would say like i think it may work like and maybe we can test it how do you think you would test it in such a device so firstly would you just believe them if they say this is useful would you just blindly use it no certainly not like they want to make money out of it you're like wait in my skin my wound i need to find some information first so how would you try and test this on this device you will do some research very good like sanvi says what would you do so you have the cells bacteria the flow the pump the microscope what will you do what do you think you can imagine what would be the step one step towards this research okay so you'll apply it very good says ala you'll apply it to the wound made in the device maybe with or without bacteria look at it under the microscope are the bacteria dying are the skin cells surviving not surviving is the wound closing that is why we did that scratch and looked at the wound closing over several hours right silver is an antiseptic yes adrit so this is a good thing to test somebody might come up with even more bizarre things they might come up with things like uv light blue light all of that can be tested on such a device right you make a wound add bacteria expose it to uv light or blue light and then see what the effect on the bacteria is on the skin cell is so these platforms help us test medicines without humans and without animals in the lab under conditions that we can control do you think you can control this device better than you would control a little mouse who's been wounded what are your thoughts certainly right certainly we would have better control so it gives us a more a lot, rather a lot of information before human or animal testing and may even reduce replace human animal testing right great great so everyone seems to have got it snail we need to publish this paper fast otherwise ttas team is going to publish this before we get there oh, uh, did, did you invent the chip yes we made it we made it this is original research naman we make all of this we come up with these ideas we execute it no l- 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 question by um, i think by kavish in the chat window uh, his question was why do we use human cells why can't we use cells from other animals in this device uh you can 
you can definitely but the whole point of this is that we want to make a device that is as relevant to human wounds as possible right because we want to learn more about wounds and wound infections on humans so that's why we use human skin cells and not skin cells from mice or from guinea pigs or pigs or any other animal right so adding human cells is what makes this platform more relevant to humans okay no we don't make the bacteria we buy the bacteria um yeah we buy them from a company uh siddharth had a very very nice question um his question was everybody's immunity is slightly different everybody has a different immune system so how can we account for that and that's one of the advantages of such platforms or such organs on chip right they allow you to modify it slightly or tweak it in certain ways such that you are testing something more specific that is more precise to a person okay so let's take this example of this wound device that we have right so if you want to test uh, what are the effects of this new medicine that has come for diabetic wound infections okay so which means now you don't want to study just any wound you want to study a diabetic wound so what can you add to your system to make it more relevant to diabetes patients or to di- people who with diabetes who get wounds close close very good very good brilliant glucose brilliant. right yes. such a simple thing you can add it into the liquid that you flow through so you're mimicking a condition where the level of glucose is high right Absolutely. because you added extra right Absolutely. so then this becomes more relevant to somebody who has diabetes so that's how you can tweak and you can make this platform study a specific question based on what it is you are looking at you can ask a particular question you can find ways that you can replicate it in this platform so this is what it allows you to do it's easier to do this than to create a diabetic mouse and study create a mouse with diabetes which you can do actually but much more complex and difficult then wound it then study the effects right where you can't control how much glucose you add etc so these are the kind of possibilities So okay. obviously this is not the only organ on chip there are multiple organs on chip that have been studied that are being used across the world and they are very very interesting so if you found this interesting you should definitely go and look at different organs on a chip um the first ever organ on chip to be developed was a sm- very very tiny uh, even smaller than the size of your palm a v- tiny chip that mimic lung your lung capillaries and like exchange of gases between your lung cells okay it was a very very beautiful device um and that was the start of this field of organs on chip and ever since then there have been so many things there's now an eye on chip that even has a mechanical eyelid so it blinks um and that's important because every time you blink you are basically moistening your eye right and that's important uh, when you're studying eye diseases so you can use these chips organs on chips to study all of these devices there's a blood b- brain barrier there's a lung a heart a brain a gut a liver a pancreas all of these organs on a chip that we've developed right that labs around the world have developed have developed absolutely and the reason all of this is there important is a placenta is on a chip sorry there is even a placenta on a chip yes exactly right and why and you the, think placenta on a chip would be important if i told you here this is it this is a placenta on a chip you can use it what would you use it for a placenta is when it mother, the baby is in the mother's uh, womb uh, that is what provides nutrition to the baby uh, like blood and gases you can study nutrition yes very good very good does the placenta transfer nutrients is it tra- what are the conditions more importantly more importantly more than nourishment what is the one thing you should make sure whether the placenta can transfer that or not which would be considering which would be important for the baby's health nutrients infections medicines there are some medicines a mother should not have during pregnancy because it can damage the baby right so you can test on the placenta on a chip whether that medicine is transferred or not so look at the possibilities guys look at the possibility 
Go ahead, Sneha. Sorry. Yeah. An eye on chip. Yes, which is exactly what's on the slide you see in the center. That's the eye on a chip. And the reason all of these things are important is because we can test so many different conditions. We can test so many different diseases. Of course, all of this is not a substitute for research on animals or animal testing, right? Uh, for a new medicine or for any kind of new uh, injection that's supposed to be delivered, anything, all of that has to go through animal testing. But what these organs on chip do is they can help us reduce the amount of animals we use in these studies. Because if the organ on chip itself is telling us that a medicine is not going to work, there is absolutely no need to test it on an animal, right? Because even at the simplest level of a few layers of cells, in a device where we have such controlled flow, such controlled aspects of nutrients, um, of the pH, temperature, all of this we can control. So even in these controlled conditions, if a medicine is not working, the chances that it will work in animals is even less, right? So these help us try to reduce the kind of animals that we use, the amount of animals we use, and hopefully make systems that are much more relevant to humans. And think about it, right? You can test so many different types of medicines, test them in different doses, combinations. All of this doing it on animals means you're increasing cost, ethical considerations, like someone said, guilt-free testing. All right. So we finished early, Snehal, but lots of material covered, 10 minutes. Yes. Uh, we can take a few more questions and then yes. we can discuss the next session, next week's session. And lots of new people. So if you have any questions about TTAS in general, please ask us. Yes. It doesn't have or to be only up or anything. Yes, it doesn't have to be everything on a chip. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? Yes. So somebody asked, is there a human on a chip? Not really. But we have all of these different systems, right? So you could actually connect all of them, find ways uh, to connect maybe the heart to the brain or maybe to the gut and study how all of these systems interact with each other. Right? That is also something really interesting that could maybe happen. So think about it, guys. For building these platforms, what are the kind of different scientists you will need in the team? First things first, what, what are the different types of scientists you will need in the team? You need a biologist, you need an engineer, you need a doctor for sure. Right? Many of the people working are MD, PhDs. Engineer, electrical engineer, doctor, biophysics, excellent. Um, Snehal and me, of course, I mean, we, we absolutely agree. No scientific team is <laughs> complete without us. <laughs> Thank you, Ala. Uh, so, Ala makes us feel really good at all times, Snehal. So, yeah. So, you so need a computer, which is absolutely right. Yes. All of them, <laughs> neurologists. If you're doing brain on chip, you'd rather have a neurologist to give you input, whether it is really mimicking the disease or not, right? If you're doing placenta on a chip, you might need a gynecologist who will be able to look into, you know, uh, yes. the mother's health, baby's health, pediatrician, for example. So this is a very, what you call interdisciplinary area of science. Many people, different types of scientists work to make these models, these on a chip models. Yes. And that's very important. And a lot of science is like that, right? It is interdisciplinary. You can't really have one field without the other. Okay? Yes. So even though in schools, like you are taught science as very specific subjects, you are taught chemistry as separate from physics, which is separate from biology, which is separate from mathematics. In actually doing research, you need to understand all of it. You need to have a basic understanding of everything, right? So for this chip, for example, uh, if I had never studied mathematics, I would have never been able to calculate all of the sizes and dimensions that we needed with the help of our engineer, Jay, who helped us, right? If we had never done that, I don't think we would have been able to build this device. And that also goes for Jay, who's an engineer, but because he was interested in biology, if he was never interested in biology, he would have never have applied his engineering skills to a biology project. Absolutely, absolutely. Very true. And what he brought was the ability to design this device on software and repeatedly redesign it because there were issues with the printing, issues with it under the microscope. So science is also a lot of going back, correcting and trying again, going back, correcting and trying again. Though we've told you a very straight story. Any guess 
how much time this has taken from day one to today to get here. And Nizam is still working on it. So any guess how much time it has taken? Um, okay, years, years, five to ten years, ten years, three years. I will say, no, six months is too short. Six months, so we didn't even have the cells. If you remember, Snail, the cells were stuck in FedEx. Four years, yes. It's been four years. And in that, Snehal was with us. Snehal is now in the UK. Jay was with us. Jay is now has his own startup. So things change. Project goes on, but it's taken four years. <laughs>